All right, welcome to episode two of Decision Reactions. This is a series, a little bit of fun. The idea around this is to get us understanding, thinking, and talking about quality decision making. So I will look at someone, I will watch a video of someone making or explaining a decision, and then I'm going to give it a score out of five. Very, very unscientific, so don't read too much into that, but I just want us to think about quality decisions and what one looks like. And what one looks like is all about how the decision is made, not about the outcome. The outcome can be down to luck. Of course, we want great outcomes, but a single decision may produce a good or a bad outcome, partly based on luck. What we need to be doing is thinking about making quality decisions all the time. So I'm going to be looking at each video and giving it a score out of five based on our five point focus framework for decision making. Focus is just a way of organizing what good decision making looks like. It stands for number one, framing. So how well does the decision match up against one's objectives, purpose, values, the thinking around who makes the decision, how long it needs to take, all of those kinds of things. That's framing. Options, having the right amount of options, not too many, not too few. Cognitive biases and other human factors. So taking into account the ways in which our minds might play tricks on us, as well as how our physical and mental states might affect whether or not we make a very good or very bad decision. Uncertainty is what the U stands for. So that's all about thinking probabilistically, the risks, the assumptions, all of those things, the likelihood of things working out or not. And S is selection, so choosing the right option and then moving into action mode. So this episode is entitled, Take the Money and Run. And we are going to look at the decision from the world of art. All right, so I mentioned that this edition of Decision Reactions comes to us from the world of art, and specifically it comes to us from Denmark and from an artist by the name of Jens Hanning. And you may have come across this, but he was commissioned a couple of years ago to produce a piece of work very similar to pieces of work that he did in the past in which he framed banknotes. And this was meant to be a commentary on wages. And what Jens did was he turned around and to this museum delivered a couple of blank canvases. So the piece of the work is called Take the Money and Run. Now, the thing that I'm going to look at here is whether or not the decision to do this was a quality decision. And to do that, we're going to watch a piece from Al Jazeera. I think this is about a year ago in which they interview the artist, the museum, and an art commentary, commentator. So let's have a look at this piece. Lasse Anderson tells us one particular piece has created quite a stir. When you work with artists, you they, they challenge the way we perceive the world, and you can you can never know what you get. The Kunsten Museum of Modern Art certainly had no idea what they'd be in for when they loaned Danish artist Jens Hanek more than half a million krona, approximately $84,000. The cash was supposed to be placed inside these frames, an attempt to recreate an earlier work by Hanek and to illustrate income gaps affecting Danes. But when the canvases were delivered, they were blank. What's interesting as well to me, we're not going to look at this specifically here, but what goes into the thought process of this particular museum? Like, did they think that this is a possibility that they could have gotten this? And the, the guy actually here, he says that you never know what you're going to get when you work with artists. So I'm not so sure that they knew what they were getting. They ended up suing Jens, by the way, and won, although he's going to appeal. But let's keep watching. Hanning had decided on his own to create a new work, one he called Take the Money and Run. My staff... I love the name. I love the name. ...was really worried, saying, oh my God, we don't have the art piece we wanted and where's all the money? The museum is displaying the piece, but they're also threatening legal action if the money isn't eventually returned. So they actually... The controversy has action. both driven up attendance and sparked a debate in Denmark about mm. the true value of an artist's work. 
which means the Kunsten Museum now finds itself in a unique position, exhibiting a piece that some have called art and others have labeled theft. Would you go and visit this thing? When we meet Hani in his studio in another town, he explains how inspiration struck. We do something about the, an average Danish income. Eh? Why don't you do something about your own situation? Eh? So, so, so then I thought, no, no, I'm going to do a fantastic piece for the show. So a couple of things here. I think that this decision, Hanning's decision, was very much rooted in his sense of purpose and values, obviously. So he gets a big tick for framing. And if we think about also options, I think he also gets a big tick for that because he could have just delivered the piece of work, whatever that was in, in the contract. And he, he didn't. He did something else. Hanning says creating what the museum requested would have cost too much out of his own pocket. He considers the new piece a commentary on low wages and believes that makes it even more appropriate for the art show. I ask if he... So again, I think that confirms what I'm saying about framing and options. You may have a different value set. You may not agree with what he did, but if you're looking at it from the perspective of Jens Hanning, an artist, I, I think I think he gets full points on framing and options. Plans to return the money? No, 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 the, the, no strictly that's not going to happen. Back at the museum, we heard what visitors think. So he's not going to return the money. In fact, I also found a very interesting piece that I will link into the show notes from, from NPR. Um, so he says that he knew that he was breaching contract. So he says it is a breach of contract and breach of contract is part of the work. So this whole act is the work of art. And I, I think that that is a work, a work of art. Again, you may have different, a different view of that, but it's, it's an act of, of art. Don't really see any evidence of of cognitive bias, of understanding cognitive bias, but let's let's keep watching. Brilliant. If someone gave you a lot of money and asked you to put them on a painting, wouldn't you be tempted? It doesn't seem like an art to me if it's totally blank. An argument that won't be settled anytime soon, as viewers continue to ponder how one piece can seemingly be as conceptual as it is literal. Mohammed Jamjum, Al Jazeera, Albo, Denmark. It's a piece as conceptual as it is literal. So, again, I you know I, I do think that if we think about the the purpose and the the options, and then you know S for selection, he went out out and did the thing, so he gets full marks there too. Let's bring in James Rushing. Daniel, who's an associate teaching professor at the University of Washington. He joins us now live from Philadelphia. Good to have you with us. Um, it's a great publicity stunt. Everybody's talking about it, but is it art? I think it is art, and I think it's a wonderfully provocative piece. That's a very important piece in, in the contemporary art scene. I think that uh, what Hanning is doing is he's calling attention to the underpayment of artists, and I think even more provocatively, he's demonstrating the hypocrisy of certain kinds of art institutions within the art world, like uh, art fairs and museums that can be critics of capitalism on the one hand and yet underpay artists on the other. Yeah, that's an interesting debate. He does here say that it was about criticizing the, the payment of artists. I've read elsewhere that it's about wages. So there, there might be a little bit of a, of a, of a disconnect between the, the message, but I generally agree with this guy that that it is art. I'm not familiar with the art world, but one does see sponsorship from from corporates, which probably is very Im important to keep these these museums alive. But let's keep watching. So you approve of, of, of this? Is that is that what it, you think it is saying to us? This this blank canvas. I do. I do think it. Hunting is a provocateur with a political uh, message, and uh, and I think it is uh, precisely saying just that. Is he's a provocateur, political message. You know, again, 
uh, very well framed alignment with values. So I'm going to kind of bring it back and, and, and wrap up this particular decision reaction. I think framing, full marks, options, full marks, cognitive bias, didn't really hear or see very much there about that. I don't really know what the specific and detailed decision-making process was. So I'm going to just give Jens a half mark out of five on that. Uncertainty. He knew, and he says that breach of contract and breach of contract is part of the work. So the work is that I have taken their money. He knew full well what was likely to happen, or at least he presumably would have considered it. And he's been sued and now he's going to appeal. And at some point, I guess some judge in Denmark is going to have to rule about whether or not this was art. That'll be very interesting to to watch. But we've we've heard and seen how much attention this has gotten. So there's there's some benefit. Perhaps he would have taken some inspiration from from other cases like the one here in Banksy. I'm not I'm not really sure. Is this art? I think it is, but maybe you don't. That has little to do with whether or not his decision was a good decision. So again, I'm going to give him full marks under uncertainty because I think he did know very much what he was doing. And selection, he he did the thing. Now, I also came across another article where he says, I encourage other people to do that. I do not encourage you to do that. Jens Hanning has got huge cojones to be able to do this. And he is an artist. 99.9% of people who are thinking about taking the money and running, not not really a good idea. So um, so it, to me, the uniqueness of it makes it art. He gets a 4.5 out of 5 in terms of decision quality. Let me know what you think. Is this art? Was this a quality decision? Any other thoughts that you have? Would you go and visit this piece of art? all that good stuff. Sign up for updates from the Decision Making Studio and get our free primer on the Focus Framework. Bye for now.